The Duke Blue Devils look for a bounce back game. This time on the road at Georgia Tech. This is their first game of ACC play. Conference play is here, and we're here to preview and recap all the big games this season. That's Brian Ralph from Heat Check CBB. I'm Greg Waddell from Sleepers Media. Uh, let's start with just this. What's your trust level in Duke right now after the loss to Arkansas? Um, by their, their preseason expectations, it's very low. Um, but I also think we know somewhat who this Duke team is right now. Um, it's just not great. They're fine, and I trust them to be fine. I do not trust them to be great. That's fair. Do you trust anything about Georgia Tech <laughs> at all? Anything? <laughs> a team who followed up a loss to UMass Lowell and a blowout loss to Cincinnati with a win over a ranked Mississippi State team? Absolutely not. <laughs> See, that could be flipped, though. You could have done that right into, well, yeah, I do trust them. Their back was against the wall, and here we are. Uh, what what happened in the Mississippi State game? Look, there's been a lot of games going on this week. I doubt that yeah. either you or I sat here and watched this game intently full time. Uh, and shout out to Matthew Loves B Ball. His channel's being ripped down off of YouTube right now. So it's going to make it harder for us to do these recaps. Matthew number two. Matthew number two is doing the same thing, and it's quite great. We love it. We love it. What it, what happened in this game? How did they secure this victory against a Mississippi State team that's pretty good? Well, Mississippi State team is good, but Mississippi State is also flawed offensively. Uh, they don't shoot the ball very well, and Georgia Tech was able to, to win a rock fight, essentially. They dragged Mississippi State down, made them play poorly, and Mississippi State doesn't have Tolu Smith, which I think could have made things a different story. Um, but the big difference was was Kelly for Georgia Tech. He's been the leading scorer this season. He's averaged over 19 a game. Um, the Miles Kelly in that game, double-double, was able to, to give them some good rebounding from the guard position. Was the difference in the backcourt? Because Mississippi State's backcourt did not play at a high level. Georgia Tech really didn't either. But they had Miles Kelly who contributed and, and put up a big game. And I think that's kind of the key for Georgia Tech moving forward. They've identified him as somebody who was going to lead them and, and, and be their star. At least it's it's been that way to this point this season. They need him to have another big game, but that that was the difference against Mississippi State is he was better than anybody else Mississippi State had in the backcourt. That's not going to happen against Duke, right? I mean, I know we have our concerns. It should, with it should Proctor. not happen. It should not happen. Like this, this would take the Tyrese Proctor slander to a whole nother level, right? It should not happen. But you talk about I don't don't trust Duke. I it would not shock me. If it happened, it would surprise yeah. me, but it would not shock. Me. Yeah, I just think it's hard to say with a straight face and truly mean it that like there's no worry for Duke here. And obviously we're not saying that, but I just think like even even if on paper, there's nothing that we would pick out to say Georgia Tech has a good chance to win this game. It's hard to feel confident in what we've seen from Duke right now, especially when you work in some numbers I'm about to throw at you. Jeremy Roach has played at Duke last three seasons this is his fourth season do you know what his record is in true road games below 500 just above 500 barely 17 and 16 in three and now three and a quarter years as a Duke blue devil the, the, on paper like that doesn't sound horrible right 17 and 60 on the road whatever it's duke like it's duke and this is in the acc man like i didn't filter yeah. by top 100 games that's like like, they lose half their games on the road in a conference that has included Louisville and Notre Dame and Pitt. Like, I I'm sorry yeah. to just crap on this conference, but, like, this is a game that this program has been losing even when they've had NBA superstars here. And I know everybody loves the high-end talent of Duke this year. I'm not sure they've got an NBA superstar. Like, is, is Flip supposed yeah. to be the NBA player on this team that's transcending road spooky little night games against Georgia Tech? Um, They're going to prop him up as that because there isn't a better option right now with the way Tyrese Proctor's playing. Um, this, is, I think, is a, is a tricky spot for Duke because you're right. Um, and to, to be the vibes guy for a second, Duke's vibes are off. And and there are some rumblings that maybe there are some internal figuring things out, let's call it, that are that 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 are happening. If Duke is not right, like this is a spot where Georgia Tech's gonna make them go in and compete. 
and for Damon Sodmeyer, like this is the perfect opportunity after beating Mississippi State to really get a, 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 a signature win, put a real stamp on your season that like, okay, we're turning these things around now. We figured it out. They're going to throw a lot at this game. And that's not uncommon for teams facing Duke. Like Duke is the game where you sell your arena, your fans storm the court, no matter how good or bad Duke is. And I think some of that plays into the, the ACC road record that you just brought up. But Duke also, as we, as we talked about, is, is limited somewhat, particularly with the way Tyrese Proctor's playing. They're not getting a play from the backcourt. It, it seems to be kind of Filipowski or Buss, and then Roach try and bail us out late. And if Georgia Tech turns this into a rock fight again, I don't know if that, if that bodes well for a team who we've had some questions about how, how tough they are. In regards yeah. To Duke. yeah, it's adversity, right? Like, what, what is Duke going to do if they – Go, get down 8-0 before the first media timeout in this game, right? Are the eyeballs looking around at each other? And I'm so glad we brought in another vibes guy because for years I've been the vibes guy on this channel and people just look at me like I'm insane. No, like they we matter. We, they we, matter. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of cold, hard numbers and everything like that, but you know, vibes tell a story too. Yeah, it doesn't take an expert, even though I am an expert. It doesn't take a body language PhD to tell you something's off with this Duke team right now. Uh, by the way, I cut up the numbers for Jeremy Roach, but if you want to trim it down further to just the sophomore superstars, right? Flip and Proctor, four and seven on the road. So as we get younger and younger with this roster, the wins get less and less in road games. Like this is just a spot these young guys haven't proven it. I think the advantage is that Roach had that one year with Bancaro. 100%. That'll do it. Well, hey, how nice would it be to drop Paolo Bancaro on this roster right now? You think that would fix Duke's problems? Yes. <laughs> Probably, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so while, while we uh, speculate that, hey, this might go south for Duke, we're not confident, blah, blah, blah. At the same time, these two teams played last season with all these guys we're talking about that may have their vibes being off right now. And at Georgia Tech, home game, right where this game is going to be played, Duke stormed in and beat them 86-43. to 43. What's your prediction of what will happen in this game, Ryan? I know we just talked about the vibes being off for Duke. I think Duke wins handily. It's probably like 15. I don't know if it gets up to, to 20 at, at the end. It may be there at some point during the season. Duke's more talented. Georgia Tech just played a really big game. And I think the fact they beat Mississippi State, I think raised a lot of eyebrows, particularly with some of the past results that Georgia Tech has had. But they're still figuring things out. And that game, I think, tells us more about Mississippi State than necessarily does about Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is going to apply a similar strategy to this game, but Duke is so much more talented. Even if they just get a few good minutes from one of the freshman guards or you know, Proctor gives them a few good minutes, that can set things in motion to really snowball. Duke has a better athlete. Duke has better skill. Duke's not deep, but Duke has probably better depth than Georgia Tech does, at least from a, a what they can provide perspective. Um, I, w I would be shocked if Georgia Tech makes this the game. I, I, I think Duke still wins pretty handily. I'm right there with you. I think my game script is Georgia Tech actually jumps out hot at the gates, and it's kind of a gut check moment. Maybe Shire takes an early timeout, or I don't know what. They're down six, eight points early, and everybody's looking at each other, like I said. Then I think they actually lock in and actually have a great team performance. I'm expecting that they're more talented. There's not much Georgia Tech can do to limit this. Um, I get it. Like Georgia Tech has good players. Like I like Kawasi Reeves. I like Miles Kelly. I think they're both good. I don't think either of those guys on paper should win their individual matchup here. And this is sort of a spot of like, hey, what are you made of? And while I'm criticizing Duke's toughness. One of the things I believe to be true about Filipowski and Proctor is that when they play opponents who are totally just not as talented as them, they can be the big bad wolf again. They can kind of bully. Right. All of a sudden they get tough when they're not playing somebody that tough. I think we're going to see that tonight and uh, Duke will end up covering but it'll be a little testy early. That's my prediction. Okay. We'll see what happens. Uh, if you want our recap of this game, we will be back on the channel to do just that here on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel. Click subscribe for Brian Ralph from Heat Check. I am Greg Waddell from Sleepers Media, and we'll see you then.